Um, so let's let's sit up straight and tall. So find your sitting position wherever it's going to be today. I'm shifting back and forth on my sitting bones a little bit, helping me find um, helping me find that center point that feels a little more comfortable this morning. And then once I've found that that center point, I'll just allow myself to notice where the sitting bones are, allowing myself to sit down as you know, as equally as we as equally as possible as equally as comfortably possible here. Letting the body land here this morning. Hands can be face down, face up, wherever they most comfortably are lying on your lap this morning. And go ahead and soften your eyes or close your eyes, whatever feels right for you right now. Let the breath settle in the body without any manipulation. You know, you'll notice that as we draw attention to the breath, it does tend to deepen and slow a bit. But don't manipulate it. Don't worry about playing with it at all. Be grateful that it keeps chugging away even when we're not paying attention. And so the body begins to land here. Let's let go of anything that, that it took for you to get to class today. We'll set that aside for now. You can pick it back up later on. Soften the inside of the mouth, the area around the eyes, the inner ears. Maybe even let just a, the hint, just the hint of a smile appear on the lips, recognizing that, yeah, you got here today. You made the time. That's a win. <laughs> now draw your attention to where you're feeling the breath this morning. Let it land a little bit lower Lower in the abdomen now. So as you inhale, you just feel the gentle, gentle and natural expansion of the belly with the inhale. And then the gentle recoil, just the passive recoil of the belly as you exhale. No need to take a deeper breath or to count your breath or time your breath. Just notice it. Letting it land low in the body right now. Often when we get anxious, our breath tends to sit a little higher. And so we'll just start our practice today, letting it, letting it land low, tuning into the subtlety here. So we're always thinking about the respiratory diaphragm. Well, maybe we're not always thinking about it. Maybe I'm thinking about it. Today, as you're feeling this, this uh, respiratory diaphragm, you know, it descends as we inhale. So we get this nice, nice uh, expansion of the belly outward and retraction, gentle passive recoil with the exhale. And I want you to draw your attention down as we're still in this quiet space today before we start moving. Draw your attention down to the pelvic floor. And as the respiratory diaphragm descends, the pelvic diaphragm also descends with our inhale. So slowly inhaling and allowing for both of those, both of those diaphragms to work in rhythm. Already beginning to tune into the very subtle rhythms of our body. So you feel the expansion of the respiratory diaphragm or the belly as, it, as the respiratory diaphragm drops down. And then notice also the bottom, the pelvic floor also, there's a little bit of a drop down and then that passive springing up with the exhale. 
And if you don't notice it, it's okay. Just be grateful that your body, as I said, is always chugging away, chugging away with that rhythm. And if you get distracted, it's okay. Bring yourself back as you can. Couple more breaths here. And now begin to feel that breath percolate through the body. What's happening in the throat? As the pelvic diaphragm, the respiratory diaphragm descend. What's going on in the throat? People often talk about the vocal diaphragm. Notice the gentle, subtle rhythms of the body as you allow yourself to get quiet enough to notice them here. This is where we're going to move from today. So gently bring the hands to the center if you wish. If you can, bring them into the prayer position or into Anjali Mudra. Take a couple of more breaths here. Maybe lift the sternum just a little bit. If it feels good, drop the chin down just a little bit here. And again, notice how the breath changes as you do that. Notice how the body responds innately to the position. Thank your body. Be happy you showed up today. Drop your hands down, back down to your thighs, palms facing up if you can. Raise your head and blink the eyes open if you had them closed. So we're gonna play with all, all of those, those very um, subtleties of, of the breath today. Again, never forcing anything, letting, letting the actual natural rhythms of the body kind of lead this practice today. And so as we're sitting here, you can have your hands face down, hands face up, whatever feels right for you. But I want you to draw your attention to your sternum first. All right, and if it feels good to give yourself a little bit of um, touch on the sternum, right, right in the heart space, that's perfectly fine. You know, I think, I can't remember if it was this class or maybe my Courage Kenny class. I bet, I bet Dave, you probably know. Um, you, you know, sometimes we talk about this, um, this aspect, yogis talk about the cave of the heart. You know, so we have our heart here more a little, little to the left of our, of, of center, but then there's, a, there's um, a mirror image of that on the other side, the, the cave of the heart. So when you put your hand here, knowing that you, you're covering not only the heart space, but you're actually, you're actually covering the cave of the heart or that quieter, reflective, darker space, maybe on the other side of the heart. Have I seen that in my anatomy books? No, but the yogis think it's there and that's, that's good enough for me. I'll take, I'll take that. And so, you know, feeling the heart center, feeling the, the cave of the heart today. Let's go ahead. Um, again, I don't want you manipulating your breath um, while we're doing this, but just let the natural breath now move into this space, moving into the heart center space, moving into the, the cave of the heart space. Oh, hello, Gay. I didn't see you come on. Good morning. And Bill, hello to you too. Dave, I saw you pop on. Good to see you. So you're like, this is so boring, but actually it's really exciting. <laughs> it's exciting to me because our, because we're starting to feel these beautiful quiet rhythms that are chugging away um, unannounced to us. You know, we don't, we don't know that they're going on, but they're always working. And then we begin to appreciate them. It can be profound. And so just feeling that, that center, breathing a little bit into your hand here. Now begin to notice in the rest of the body where you're feeling that movement. So we've got, we've got reference here. We're giving ourselves a little self-touch, a little self-reference, but something's happening in the feet. Something's happening in the throat, maybe around the temples. What are you noticing as you breathe right here? And then let's take the hand down, but let the impression of the hand on the heart remain. Notice how you can still feel that little bit of reference. And you know, we talk about it, mind-body solutions, how we use reference not to correct a pose, 
but to reveal a pose. And so what is that little bit of self-reference? What does that reveal? Do you feel the little bit of warmth from your hand there? Or maybe coolness? Does it feel better to take your hand off and free up that space? Or did it feel good to have your hand there and give yourself that little bit of reference on the, on the um, just on the edges of the body or actually more central? So now draw your attention to the space between your shoulder blades. And let's fill that space. So as you breathe in, let the shoulder blades move out to the side a little bit. As you exhale, let them come back together. So adding a little bit of doming to the back of the chest. I think we did that maybe the last time I taught. A little bit of doming to the back of the chest too. I promise you we'll get moving. I just want to start really subtle. So as you draw your attention to that back space and you feel that, that expansion in the back body, what's happening back there? What's happening to the sitting bones, to the throat, to the inside of the mouth as you bring the breath there? And now let go of the breath. I mean, you're gonna keep breathing, obviously, I hope. Um, but but don't worry about don't worry about watching it. Now just fill both of those spaces. So we're filling the, the heart and the cave of the heart, and at the same time filling that space between the shoulder blades. Did you tighten your jaw? I tightened my jaw a little bit when I did that. So I got I gotta relax the jaw. So notice where where as you draw attention there, where you might start holding tension. When you bring attention, notice where you have tension. Did it change, <clears throat> excuse me, did it change the abdomen at all? Maybe the feet even. So drop the breath here, no worries about the breath. The breath. Just let it, let your body move. So we've added this kind of anterior, posterior, and, and horizontal component. And now let's add the vertical components. We start moving, moving in all directions at once, which of course we've been doing the entire time, but now we're gonna start paying a little more attention to it. So as you continue with this breath, now I want you to drop down through the sitting bones. So it's, it's, it's as if you are starting to fill a cylinder. Now, so we're not only filling the, the cylinder horizontally and anterior posteriorly, now we're beginning to fill it vertically too. Again, letting the subtleties drive this practice. Letting the breath be soft and come naturally without manipulation and paying attention to what's moving. It's making me thirsty. I'm gonna have a drink of water. You know, Matt always says when energy starts to move, that it that it does have a tendency to make you thirsty. So, um, so yeah, it, that's uh, that's what's going on. At least I think with me. Now add the feet pressing down either physically or on the inner body through the feet to add even a little more active expansion upward while continuing to, to maintain this expansion in all directions of the torso. Combining the horizontal, the vertical, the anterior, posterior, getting this beautiful circumferential expansion today. Now, if you comfortably can, bring your hands to your ribs. So you could either bring them this way or this way, or don't bring them to your ribs at all. Whatever, whatever feels good to you, I'm gonna bring them this way just because it's a little easier for you to see on the screen. Now draw your attention into the breath or into the, not, not into the chest, but actually into the ribs here. 
So inhaling now with the ribs, we, we get this lovely kind of bucket handle effect. So notice if you can feel that as you draw the attention, um, draw your attention as you draw the breath into those lower outside ribs. Playing with that just a little bit. Now don't lose your feet, so add your feet. Ribs expand, pressing down through the feet. Play with hand positions, whatever feels right. Maybe it feels best to have your hands down. So never disregard these very subtle rhythms in the body. This is, I, as far as I'm concerned, this is the essence of, of sensuality. It is this beautiful rhythm that just underlies everything. It's just like always kind of, always, you know, moving. Um, we're constantly moving with rhythm. And, and we think about, again, that it has to be grandiose and it never ever has to be grandiose. Recognizing there are these beautiful sensual rhythms that are moving through our body um, at any time, whether it's the heart beating or the lungs moving, but also noting that it's expanding to the entire, entire body all the time. So this makes me kind of want to move. Does it make you kind of want to move? Is anybody getting a little frustrated because we're not moving enough? And it's like, come on, get moving. I want to do more yoga, <laughs> right? I know. No, and notice that, ten, notice that sensation. And also recognize that a subtle practice can be just as powerful as a very, you know, very big grandiose practice. But let's let's move a little bit. So we're going to go through um, now for really for most of the rest of class, we're going to go through um, just some rhythmic movements. So at any time you can decide not to do one of the movements that I'm um, that I'm doing, you can go back to the subtleties because you've got a whole practice. We just did a whole practice worth of subtleties if you would prefer to remain there today. But if you want to move a little bit more, um, let's start with some slow flowing rhythms, start taking them through the body. Um, and anytime you need to back off, make sure you back off. So one more set. Make sure that I'm not wasting too much time. Very good. Okay. I, I, I never consider it a waste of time to look, go into the subtleties, but I do know that people like to move. All right. So find yourself back on your sitting bones. If you need to move around a little bit, get yourself moving. And let's, let's go ahead and bring our hands up to prayer. So if that's comfortable for you, you can bring one hand up, or you can bring both hands up. It's completely, completely up to you. Let's go ahead and start here. And I want you um, some, you know, often when we do prayer position, we do it with a lot of discipline, don't we? You know, we put the bottoms of our, of our hands together and we've got the fingers and thumb and we, we have a little bit of a press. Today, I want you to give yourself a little bit of space. All right. So just like we had this, this reflection of the heart in the cave of the heart, I want you to, to give yourself um, this little bit of warmth, this little bit of space in between the hands. So it's really more of an Anjali Mudra here, um, giving, giving the, the thing, fingertips and thumbs some, some contact if you're comfortable doing so, and, um, and leaving a little bit of space there. So as we begin this now, let's go ahead and just again, feel the sitting bones, feel the feet on the foot pedals or the floor, wherever they're happening, you know, happen to land today. Take a couple of breaths into that heart space, into that space between your hands here. Now I may say at different times, inhale here or exhale here, like we would with a sun salutation, but you know what, just keep breathing doesn't, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to follow me. So we'll breathe here, inhaling and exhaling. Let's just drop the hands down. And then slowly, we're going to bring them back up. Now you can follow me as you wish, or you can go slower or faster. But what I want you to notice, now we've been studying and we've been practicing these rhythms in the body, right? So where's the, where's the rhythm that you can get into here? Where's the rhythm that opens up that elbow pit and swings it back up? 
Does it feel better to let the hands go a little behind the body and get a little bit more momentum, a little bit momentum when you bring them up? Or does it feel better just to drop them right by the hips? You decide. So we'll just do a little bit of rhythm here. Now I'm noticing that my hands are, they're, they're creeping up in front of my face. So I'm gonna bring them back in front of the heart center. You find where it feels good for you. And now this next time, let's leave our hands down by our sides. I know you can't see my hands very well. They're at about 30 degrees or so. And I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna rotate my hands up now. So I'm just rotating my hands. So my hands are facing toward the walls to my, to my sides. And then I'm letting them drop back down. And again, finding the rhythm in this. And what, what wants to jump on when you're doing this rhythm? Anybody feeling the chest want to lift? Renee, I know you are, because I can see you doing it right now. <laughs> so, so let it follow. Tune in to the intelligence of the body here. Begin to notice what movements naturally go together. And I'm just moving the hands out. Now I'll put them up here just so you can see a little bit better. I'm going out and in, but I'm keeping the hands down so I'm not working so hard against gravity. If it feels good to lift that chest a little bit more, maybe even hold it. And as you bring it up, notice again the heart in the cave of the heart here and then drop it back down. And then maybe it feels good to bring those hands out and do that a few times, getting bigger in space, or maybe it keep, feels better to keep it very subtle. So you decide where that wants to be today, how much movement you want to add, keeping, keeping it still very rhythmic. Move with grace today. Sometimes we forget that our bodies are capable of moving with grace at any moment. Just breathing is moving with grace. So now as we do this, we've left our feet, we've left the lower body out of the equation. So press down through the feet, use that to lift the chest. Maybe the head goes back, maybe the head stays right level and then back. Find the rhythm in this. Now adding the lower body and the feet in any way that works for you. Expanding vertically now as we expand horizontally up through the chest, lifting the chest, but keeping the sitting bones rooted. Maybe moving a little bit forward. Maybe you're moving to the front edge of your sitting bones, which is what I'm doing as I come forward here. I'm, I'm, my body is almost going into a natural little cat cow. And then let's bring it back to a smaller, let's bring it back up to our hands. Keep the movement going if you comfortably can. And again, you can go as slow or as fast as you go with me. Just keep the body moving. Keep the body moving. And again, when I bring my hands into this namaste position, it's really with, with a spaciousness today, a spacious, spaciousness between the fingers, a spaciousness between the palms, almost like I'm just gathering, just gathering everything up and bringing it to the, to the top. And then I'm just letting it go back down, gathering it up to the top and letting it go back down. And if this does, isn't working for you, maybe your movement is just simply bringing the hands up and bringing the hands down. So try something different and see what begins to move in the body as you begin to play with maybe a slightly different movement. Couple more times here, again, finding that sensation, sensation of movement, that sensation of rhythm in, by, in the body. And then let's bring the hands down and ground on the knees. I'm gonna push this back a little bit, maybe you can see my, you might be able to see my knees. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. Let's see, see them just a little bit better. All right. So bring your hands to your knees if you comfortably can. I've got my just my fingers kind of going over the over the edge of the knees, uh, making sure that you're you're in a comfortable comfortable position here. I'm going to come forward just a little bit in my chair. So grounding the palms on the knees, grounding the feet on the floor. 
lengthening up through the spine here, but keeping again, keeping it really, really gentle here. Let's start shifting the hips back and forth. So it could be, um, you know, sometimes we talk about our movement, the running man or running, running woman, running sentient being, I always say, um, but putting the hands on the knees and just pulling one elbow back and then the elbow, other elbow back, shifting the hips. So bringing now this, this injection of rhythm right back into the hips, right back into the hips, the base of the spine. And again, notice as you do this, what else, what else wants to be moving in the body? What wants to come on, what wants to come online here? For me, my feet wanna lift. On the shoulders. So let's start rolling the shoulders. So I'm gonna start moving as I draw that knee back, I'm gonna start taking the shoulder back because it seems like it naturally should do that. It's as, as, almost as if the body begins to pedal itself. So we're just keeping it moving. I know most of you are in cold. I happen to be in a warm space right now, which is probably why I'm moving with this subtle rhythm <laughs> today and doing smaller, smaller movements. I think that's probably has something to do with it. And then let's, let's, let's pedal the other way. So beginning to pedal this way, as you start connecting the lower body and the upper body, sometimes we see them as separate and I don't want us to see them as separate today. I want everything to just be moving. My head wants to come along for the ride a little bit and if it feels good and doesn't make you, uh, doesn't make you, you dizzy and you wanna take that, the, the head on, head along for the ride. Yeah, Gay, that's it. Gay is, Gay is always up for the ride with yoga. That's what I found. She's, she's, just, she's just doing it, man. I love it. And so we're just, we're pedaling the body. We got the running sentient being going. Now we got the pedaling going. If you comfortably can, add your feet. It doesn't, that's not working for you, then don't do it. So moving here. And then let's bring it back to the center and let it be calm, let it quiet. So coming back to the center now without, um, you know, don't feel the pressure or don't feel the need to move on to the next thing. Let's sit here. What do you notice in your body? What of that rhythm remains? Do you feel a uh, tingling, a fatigue, um, a sense of frustration or a sense of ease? What comes up? Anything that comes up, acknowledge. Acknowledge what's coming, you know, and as, as our uh, meditation teacher, Jenny, on Friday, many of you, uh, many of you know Jenny, who teaches, one of the wonderful teachers of our Friday meditation class, she says, this is the way it is right now. Can I be okay with that? And so just feel what you feel right now. Can you be okay with this? this movement, this gentle rhythm in the body. So we've been pedaling, we've been going this way, haven't we? We've been pedaling forward, we've been pedaling back. Now let's go side to side, all right? So now we're gonna snake the spine from side to side. One of the reasons I focus so much on the spine is as it is just, you know, the way it's built, and I know I tend to be a, uh, kind of an anatomy reductionist sometimes. So I apologize. Mary Peterson's like, that's enough, Amy, for Pete's sake. Um, I tend, you know, I, I love the feeling of the spine, the spine's movements. You know, we've got all these beautiful degrees of freedom in the way that we feed the spine, which is so integral to the way we move through the, we, the way we move through the world is to move it. And so we were moving it forward, you know, kind of in this, this plane going forward and back. And now we got to go side to side, playing around just a little bit. And if it feels good to come forward a little bit, if you safely can, and then feels good to go back, keep moving the spine. 
So as you do that, now begin to notice what's going on with the sitting bones. As you shift weight gently from side to side, what's happening where you're grounding, whether it be your legs or your feet, your buttocks, notice where you're grounding, what's happening to that grounding surface. Are you churning things up just a little bit? I hope so. That would be a good thing. And then bring it back to the center and be in the center. Once again, recognizing and just noting where the body's been. Let the body appreciate these, these still points. And you know, our, our yoga classes give us the, the opportunity to study the stillness. You know, it gives us the opportunity to study the rhythm, but it also gives us the opportunity to study the stillness and recognize that really there isn't any. Our minds are moving, our heart is beating, our lungs are chugging away. Be grateful for that. And let's maybe take a little cat cow. So we're just going to rock back on those sitting bones, dropping back, and then pressing down through the sitting bones or the feet or the, the back of the legs and coming up and playing around, moving back to this plane of movement, feeding the spine, feeding the body, feeding these subtle rhythms in the body in a little bit different way. And so, you know, I wish for you all of these movements. I wish for you anything that makes the body feel more alive, that allows you to tune into the body, that allows you to play with rhythm um, and, and be a little playful with it. It doesn't have to be so darn serious all the time. And if it feels better to slow that cat cow now, and lift that sternum, open up that front of the chest, draw those shoulder blades together, and then drop it down as you begin to find that space in between the shoulder blades together and the, the sternum sinks back a little bit. And then paying attention now again to the shoulder blades coming together, opening up the front of the spine. Maybe the head comes up a little bit, maybe it doesn't, it's up to you. And then making space again between the shoulder blades as the sternum recedes. One more time here. And then coming back, I hope you're breathing this whole time. Notice where your tongue is as it's pushed up against the roof of your mouth. Are you gritting your teeth as you do this? Come on back to a center point here. Notice where you're holding tension and see if you can allow that to release as much as possible. And then let's do a little bit of twisting. So again, my hands are still pretty much grounded, but now this time I'm gonna let the hand slide back. So I'm gonna let my, this is my right hand. I'm gonna let it slide back as I do a little bit of twisting here and then coming back. So I'm not holding my pelvis still often, so often in Iyengar yoga. And those of you who study with me will know that um, that we often hold the pelvis very stable. We ground and, and we bring the twist on top of it. Today, I want you to let that pelvis slide. I want you to let that pelvis rotate with the rhythm that we're injecting all the way into the base of the pelvis, up the spine. And if it feels good to inject that all the way up through the neck and take a head turn, you're welcome to do that unless that gives you dizziness but playing with that, letting there be, letting there be a freedom in the pelvis this morning and letting that percolate all the way up the spine. And if, you, if you're looking for move, more movement and you think it might feel good, maybe you take a hand back this time as you go back and then you draw it forward. But again, keeping this really, really slow and then noticing, you know, gosh, when I put my when I put my arm out and I started to add the arm, did I lose the rhythm? Did it did it make it easier? Did it make it more pronounced? Was it was it was it did I did I feel like I was doing more yoga, or did I lose the beauty of the subtlety? And decide maybe you want to add the arm, maybe you don't want to add the arm. That's all right. Whatever feels right for you today. Letting our bodies lead 
with a sense of subtlety and a sense of grace to me is one of the hallmarks of living um, a sensual life. And so on this Valentine's Day, when stores are filled with cardboard boxes of chocolates, which are not a bad thing, mind you, um, let's get back to our own sensuality. Let's get back to that which is in us every single moment and is so easily lost, so easily covered up by the desire to move, to move more, to move bigger, to have a certain expectation of how we should move. Bring it back to the center. 1844, we could do a little bit more. Let's bring it back to the center. Be in the center here. Notice where your body's been. So although we haven't had big giant movements today, we've had we've moved almost every joint. We've we've practiced our breath. We've 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 filled the body with breath in every possible direction. We've experienced the grace of moving with subtlety and recognizing the value of that quietness. And so letting the body settle here for a few more breaths. Allowing for the time and the space to let the body integrate all of the different movements that we practiced this morning. So go ahead and get yourself in a comfortable position. I'm gonna move back in my chair a little bit more. So put yourself in a, a position where you feel supported. Um, and you're welcome if, if it feels good. I know Kelly, you're sitting up. If you'd rather fly, you know, if you'd rather put your legs up the wall or whatever, whatever feels good for you. So um, in the position that you're in, you can stay seated, you can lie down, whatever you want to do. But I want you to feel really, really supported, ideally, especially your spine to feel really supported here. So sitting back, lying back, whatever feels right, grounding the hands very gently on the, uh, on the thighs to start. Let's go back to where we started today. All right, so we're gonna go back to the heart in the cave of the heart. Bringing the hand, bringing the hand here. I don't know, is your hand warmer than it was before, colder than it was before? What, is it, what does it feel like now? Has anything changed? Maybe, maybe not. And all are okay, of course. Breathe into the hand now. Allowing for that soft expansion through the heart center, through that, that reflection of the heart center on the other side. Recognize all of the, all of the movements. We've traveled a whole, whole lifetime of movement here just in this past 45 minutes or so. Letting the body naturally move from a sense of relief, trusting the body enough to let our own innate rhythms be, a, be, be the, the, uh, the starting point for our movement. Go ahead and change your hands. If you had one hand up there and it feels comfortable putting the other hand up there. Notice the hand that you put back down on the thigh. Widen through both palms, letting a sense of warmth permeate through both palms. And then dropping the hands down. And now let's take, take the hands and let's just make a little, little kind of little basket. 
with the hands. So placing one hand on top of the other, just setting that little basket down in, in the lap here, letting there be a little bit of warmth in that little basket that the hands are, hands are making here. Soft breath with the body again, no manipulation, letting it come naturally. Now going back again to where we started, drawing your attention to that space between the shoulder blades. Softening that space with the inhalation, allowing for a little bit of spaciousness. And there doesn't even have to be any movement of the shoulder blades at this point in the class. Just letting there be some spaciousness with the inhalation. And then a little bit of gentle recoil toward the midline with your passive natural exhalation. Resoften the mouth if the mouth has hardened a bit. Resoften the jaw and the eyes. And then let's take the hand that was on the bottom of that nest and put it on the top. Same thing again, really support that if it feels better to put your hands on a pillow, if they don't rest comfortably on your, on your lap. Make sure that the hands feel really supported where they are. Soften the eyes, you can close them if you want or simply soften, soften them. Again, now bringing the attention to that space between the shoulder blades. Inhaling as it expands a little bit, exhaling as it contracts or gets smaller, a little bit smaller. And again, there doesn't have to be any physical movement here. Soften the inside of the mouth again, the jaw. And then if you comfortably can, bring the hands back up to that Namaste position, except now even more of a um, even more of a round space here. And so letting there be the space and be between the hands, let the let the fingers and the thumb naturally curl. Breathing into this space like you're holding holding this space here. And then taking the pinky side hand, bringing that pinky side together and then just softly opening up the hands if you comfortably can. Again, letting there be a sense of spaciousness here and a sense of warmth in the palms and connect that sense of spaciousness and warmth in the palms all the way back down through the soles of the feet. Breathe into the whole body here. Be grateful for the breath. Be grateful for the body. And those natural rhythms that are guiding us and can be so useful when we start paying attention. And then let the hands drop down to your thighs, palms facing up or down. Let's go ahead and take a few minutes of Shavasana. So if you're comfortable right where you are, stay right where you are. Um, I think we're, I think we're doing okay. Yeah, we have enough time for Shavasana. So letting, letting the hands again be, be face up or face down, whatever feels right, making sure that you're fully supported wherever you happen to be. Resoften the inside of the mouth and the eyes. They can gently close or simply soften. We've spent this past hour really tuning into the rhythms of the breath, letting it guide us, let it, letting it be a, a sense of innate rhythm, a starting point for movement, a starting point for rest even. 
Now simply let that go. Let the body ease into this sense of quietness that Shavasana provides. Softening the eyes, the skin around the temples, even that skin behind the ear. Letting all relax and soften. Letting the shoulders drift away from the ears. And if you happen to be seated, the long bones of the arms, let them be a little bit heavy. Soften the skin around the top and the underside of the forearm. Letting that softness percolate out through the palms, the top portion of the hand, and out through the fingers and the thumbs. The rhythms of the body allow the body to soften here, to gently be rocked in this Shavasana today, lovingly held. In the skin, around the heart center begins to release toward the periphery, maybe down toward the crease of the hip. In the skin body, the, the body on the back of the trunk, that skin releases as well. There's a spaciousness in the lower abdomen, softening in through the hips and along the course of the upper leg. And then out through the lower leg and the feet. And the body rests here in the quiet, in a quiet state of awareness. Nowhere to go, nothing to fix right now. Slowly now begin the process of coming out of Shavasana. Maybe a slightly deeper inhalation, maybe a slightly longer exhalation. Blinking the eyes open, beginning to feel the edges, maybe wiggling the fingers or moving the shoulders a little bit as you 
to find your way back. And then coming back to the midline, back to the centers, always bringing the hands back together, feeling this sense of coming home, this sense of midline. And as always, ending our practice with gratitude for the opportunity to come and practice together each week. Namaste.